Welcome to the 300th episode of the 3 Minute Market Insight. Thank you for making us the most watched seafood news series for over five years. This is Robert Ryerson and here's the seafood news for the week of October 3rd, 2016. For this special 300th episode, we dug deep to find answers for the question in the back of everyone's mind. Where has all the Fraser River sockeye salmon gone? In the final in-season assessment of the Fraser River, the Pacific Salmon Commission reported parts of the Fraser at 2.5 degrees higher than average for this time of year, as well as 15% lower water discharge. We spoke with Angela Bates, the Area Director for the Fraser and BC Interior at the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Vancouver to investigate recent spawning trends. One thing that I should note is that although this is the lowest return on record, um, it may not be the lowest uh, spawning on record and so we're still waiting to see um, what happens with respect to um, fish that actually came back to spawning grounds. So far we've actually seen that fish that are coming back are in reasonably good conditions and that the, the uh, environmental conditions in the river this year were actually better than some previous years. So, so we're optimistic that we'll get a good, good spawn. A big challenge with sockeye is the dynamic outlook for this fishery, which Angela attributed to habitat availability, ocean conditions and difficulty monitoring stocks. So we can, we can see how many fish come back and, and spawn, um, but it is difficult to know what happens to them in the ocean. And once they go out to sea, um, we have some ability to to do some tracking where we, uh, for hatchery fish, for example, where we um, we we, uh, we can mark them and track them a little bit. But really, um, the big thing is that we can't we can't see them in the ocean. So unlike land-based animals, where you could um, go into the field and kind of count. Um, and, and see what's happening um, with fish, and uh, you can't do that. And so that's a challenge with any aquatic species, really. Angela indicated it's not all doom and gloom. Parts of the Columbia system and Barkley Sound saw good returns this year, a comment that was paralleled by many fishermen we spoke to. So why are sockeye stocks doing poorly when other stocks are successful? Kyla went in the field yesterday to discuss this with a local molecular geneticist at DFO. We're here at the Pacific Biological Station in Nanaimo, BC to talk to Christy Miller about the environmental conditions affecting Fraser River salmon. The interesting thing is that, you know, sockeye, uh, Fraser River sockeye are not the only species that are in decline um, in, in returning abundance and in overall productivity. Chinook and coho are also have a lot of stocks that are in decline. Um, but interestingly, you know, even though the sockeye salmon is probably the most managed species, uh, it has been the hardest to predict annual variation. Um, and and one, of, one of the potential reasons it, um, could be that the, mod, the management models that are used to predict returns um, are, are simply not working under the climatic conditions that we have today. And a lot of those models go back and look at returns forecast over 30 and 50 years and use that information in, in the predictions for upcoming years. And they, and they don't necessarily include all the environmental variables that could be undermining performance in the marine environment, especially as climate's changing. So that's something that, that a lot of people are looking at now. Well, we do know that high water temperatures and low discharge um, can increase uh, mortality in, in return migrating fish to a huge degree. We know a little bit less about, ab about their impacts on juvenile stages. Um, I've worked a lot with a team at UBC from Scott Hinch's group um, there and have graduate students that have done a lot of work looking at the impact of increased temperature on, on stress and survival in salmon and we're also now looking at the impact of high water temperatures on disease development and, and we know from the studies that we performed that water temperatures have a huge impact on of salmon in, in the Fraser River. Um, all of that work so far again has been on adult salmon. We're now refocusing our efforts on, on juvenile stages. We are headquartered on the west coast of BC, so Kyla was also able to speak with Jeffrey Young, a senior science and policy analyst for the David Suzuki Foundation, about environmental factors in more depth. 
Jeffrey alluded to the warm blob that traveled the west coast this summer as a significant factor of low run estimates, but that larger environmental factors are at play. Uh, the other key factor that's related to climate change uh, is increased uh, temperatures in uh, fresh water in the Fraser River itself as well as some of the streams that these fish would be spawning in. Uh, that's been on a fairly steady rise over uh, the past few decades and uh, is a real indicator that we've got some steady climate change effects uh, in freshwater at least. Uh, sockeye salmon are near the southern extent of their range. Uh, as a result they've always been somewhat temperature sensitive and kind of at their lower limit in terms of what they can handle and with these increased temperatures we're getting much higher mortality in river uh, and uh, bigger risks from disease. Several Fraser River fishermen we spoke to indicated that aquaculture plays a big role in the area, a topic which DFO is still doing research on, but Jeffrey was able to comment on it. So we, uh, we know that juvenile sockeye salmon migrate past a number of open net cage salmon farms, uh, particularly in the Discovery Islands. Uh, we also know that parasite loads on those fish are higher in some years at least, uh, related to salmon farms, and that they can also transmit disease. Higher temperatures from recent ocean conditions actually exacerbate the impacts both of parasites and the prevalence of disease. So it's plausible that uh, some of these open net cage salmon farms have had some impacts during the most vulnerable life phase of salmon, which is the juvenile phase when they'd be migrating past those uh, farms. So the biggest concerns from aquaculture that we, we continue to have with, for Fraser sockeye salmon are uh, disease and parasite impacts that are exacerbated by warmer ocean conditions. Jeffrey noted that as fresh water detriment steadily increase, there are unprecedented conditions to indicate the Fraser is on a steady track to, to, for worsening. Chinook are also struggling, indicative of poor sockeye runs in the future as they spend less time in the ocean. So what is the outlook? So what is the outlook for the future? So by 2018, when we expect the next big return, we should see more fish than we saw this year. We should see in the millions, which is normal. What we don't know is whether it'll be similar to some of the record high returns from 2010 or whether it'll be still depressed relative to that average. So it's very likely that there will be some sort of sockeye fishing in 2018. It's very likely that next year will be quite poor. Beyond that, uh, these ongoing concerns with uh, freshwater temperature as a result of climate change and the potential for climate change to further uh, allow this warm ocean blob to continue and to ultimately get worse over time is something we don't know how it'll affect year by year but ultimately could get worse with longer periods of time. Analyzing all of these perspective and scientific research, we can see that successful spawning could bring sockeye back to the area, but climate change will ultimately challenge this fishery in the long term. As a staple on the west coast to many industries, families and local businesses, we all continue to follow this fishery closely. To wrap this special episode up, our Tradex Live offer of the week is for 1-3 to three pound IVP Sinbad Platinum Sockeye Salmon Fillets. These are 1x25, number one quality as always and packed in Canada. We have 20,000 pounds available in Seattle for $675 at a at 1,500 pound minimum. Click or tap the icon above to view this offer. Thank you for joining me for the Tradex Foods 3 Minute Market Insight. This is Robert Ryerson. Buy smart and eat more seafood.